right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined from Raleigh in North Carolina by Raiden Stansel. How are you doing? Doing great. Thank you for having me uh, on today. Absolutely. And it's we're going to talk about a fascinating subject today, which is ways to secure your retirement. And uh, and Raiden has written a number of books. I believe you have another book coming out very soon. Is that correct? Actually, it just is uh, out now. Oh, it's just out now. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, and what we're as I said, what we're going to talk today about is uh, ways to secure your retirement. And let's just let's just dive into it uh, immediately, um, Raiden, because I think this is a time now where people are kind of confused. There's a lot of panic out there. You know, the, there's inflation, the economy, you have, you know, Robert Kawasaki saying buy silver and other people buy gold and all of that. And I think, and I've, I've heard recently of people actually, um, you know, pulling some of their, their, their retirement stuff out of like 401ks and putting them into precious metals, et cetera. So when, when you talk to people, how do you, how, what, did, how do you help them, would get their head around the current economic situation and at the same time keep a perspective for the future well when it comes to investing i mean you know which is what is what you're asking about there i think that the key is is that there's a couple different ways to go about it and one of those is well i guess there's three there's one which is where you just buy a diversified portfolio and you just hold it no matter what that one's very difficult because when the market starts to correct or crash, uh, people get panicked and they make emotional decisions mm -hmm. and they usually make uh, the, the, the decision to sell and get out. They usually make that at the bottom of the market. So it's, a, it's one of the worst times ever to get out. You then got a second category, which is speculation. And that's what you're describing right there. When you talk about this idea of selling something now and buying gold and the speculation there is, oh, the economy is going to crash. The dollar is going to crash. So let's go buy gold because that should protect us. The reality is gold has not been a very good investment. So speculating if it's going to be gold or if it's going to be some, you know, uh, cryptocurrency, whatever it might be. To me, that's extremely dangerous. Uh, it can make you a lot of money, but you can lose everything. There's a yeah. third category. And the third category, which is the one we employ, is actively managing the money. And what we do there is we track demand in the market and we kind of weigh supply versus demand and we move as markets move. So, for example, you know, if you go to the beginning of 2021, uh, small cap and mid cap type companies were big that has actually started to shift here recently and so our portfolios will be shifting out of small cap and mid cap companies going to where things are stronger so we believe in actively managing the account but not speculating yeah no i think that's a great point that you raised and a great distinction for for people who are watching and listening uh, because as you said i mean none of us are most of us are not professional investors we're not professionals like yourself in in retirement planning and all of that and so we do tend to make emotional decisions and panic decisions and and rather than put a lot of thought into it so let's talk about that that whole concept of uh, you have in your book it's a lifetime of security thanks to lifetime income um what do you what do you mean by that well, I think that, you know, when you think about retiring, you, if you just think about it conceptually for a second, for decades, people work for somebody or for themselves and they get an income and they save up their money and then they get ready to retire. And if you retire from a company or you retire from a career, the income is no longer coming in. And people get very nervous about that. We always talk about there is the the number one fear that people have out far out out of higher than dying is running out of money. And in particular, it's running out of income because if we don't have money coming in, you can't pay the bills. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we teach people that they need to have an in, have income streams in their retirement so that they have money coming in every single month. And it's very predictable. Now, some sources are social security. Maybe you've got a pension. And if you need more money up and above those two things, which most people do, 
then we need to set up another layer of guaranteed income or income streams that will feed them the income they need throughout their retirement. That takes all the pressure off and that gives them peace of mind because if you've got the income coming in, you don't have to stress, am I going to be able to pay the bills? And that's more important than investing, in my opinion, because I, I could look at my account and say, oh, it's up 10% this year. But if I had no income, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, I mean, then you know, when you do come to retire, I mean, you're basically, it's in the lap of the gods, isn't it? Like, are things going to be up, down, sideways, whatever, when that time comes? Um, but it's a good, it's another interesting point that you make here, uh, because I think you're right. I think most, a lot of people think of their um, retirement as I just, I just put aside a lump sum and that carries me through for X amount of years and hopefully that's okay. So let's, um, let's talk about some of these ways of having income streams that you help people with. So there's a few different ways to do it. I think that you have to decipher though, is the income going to be uh, decided upon how investments are doing or do we want it to be guaranteed? Um, we tell people this, we break income down into three categories. We have our, our needs and that's what we have to have just to pay the bills every month. So whatever that is, so if I got to pay the light bill and I got to eat, well, those are needs. Then we've got our wants. Our wants are, I want a new car. I want to go on vacation. I want clothes. I want all those things. And then the final area is I want to give away some money. So I want to help grandkids with college, or I want to give away to a charity. That one's the, the, the one that has the most flexibility to it. But for those needs, we believe they need to be guaranteed. And so again, I go back to what guaranteed in our business is very tricky. We can only use that on a few different places. So social security is guaranteed, regardless of what you believe about social security for right now, it's guaranteed. The second place is our pensions. Those are guaranteed. And then if I want a third area, I really have a very limited choice. I can do CDs, money markets, treasury bonds, and fixed annuities. That's my categories that I can go to for fixed income that's guaranteed. Um, we tend to talk a lot about how to use those different tools. One of those that's the most complicated, though, are fixed annuities. And so we teach people how to, in all essence, understand how they work and the pros and cons and what not to look for, meaning what not to look at and what to look at. And then you can actually have a person that, that says, okay, my needs are X. $4,000 a month. Let's have the $4,000 a month guaranteed coming in. And then we can go and invest the rest of the money and not worry so much about uh, how I'm going to pay the bills. Yeah, no, that uh, absolutely. And yeah, I mean, the, the others you mentioned, like CDs, I think people, you know, generally have an idea of, of although I often hear people like, almost putting down CDs and things like that is saying, oh, well, you know, there's such low return on those or you're playing it safe. Um, but let's um, let's let's uh, explore a little bit more the, the fixed annuities, because as you say, I mean, I think this is an area that that a lot of people probably don't understand. Yeah. So with an annuity, I think it's important for people to understand, first of all, why they're doing it, mm -hmm. because if they're, if you were going to look at the controversy within, you know, radio host or or newspaper articles or magazines, the, the, the negative to them would be like, why would you ever put your money into a fixed annuity if I could go and invest it and make a better rate of return? Well, that's a wrong comparison. What I wanna compare the annuity to is CDs, cash in the bank or bonds. And if I compare it there, annuities rank pretty good. Uh, every year right now, billions of dollars are moving into annuities because people can get predictable income and have a predictable rate of return. Uh, so basically what happens is, is you put your money into an annuity that is an insurance product. And the uh, insurance company then goes and invests that money in curtain conservative investments. And then you get to uh, get a return off of that or an interest rate off of that. Uh, we find that if you use uh, annuities that are fixed, but still have opportunity for earnings, like an index, like mm -hmm. a, a, an index linked annuity, you can earn between four and 5% a year on average. And I think that in that environment, that's pretty good money, especially if you look at it today. Uh, we're not trying to tell people they're going to make 10 and 12%. That's just not realistic on an average. But if you can earn around a four to 5% rate of return, that's pretty darn good. I think in this current environment, especially if you're talking about guaranteed income. 
Yeah, no, and absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and and I guess, as I said at the beginning, I mean, I think people are in sort of kind of panic mode a little bit now about the uh, economy. You know, they have good reason for it, too. But um, one of the things I see chapter in your book, you talk about what drives the US economy. And I do think when and I know even when I have conversations myself, that people have wildly different ideas of what drives the economy. Absolutely. I think that, um, you know, one of the things that we talk a lot about is hey, what drives the economy is people. And uh, that's something that people overlook. And, you know, if you look at uh, if you've got a vast majority of your population that is retiring, they spend less money than the group of this that's coming up and going to school and going to college and buying their first house and buying their first car and, you know, uh, put, buying all the furniture for their house. If you don't have that younger part of the generation, uh, then of, of the younger part of the population, rather, then your economy is going to slow. And we can look at other economies that really did not, they kind of made some decisions and their younger population, they didn't have, they don't have babies being born right now. One is China, that because of some of their, their restrictions on how families were formed, they don't have a lot of the new families right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so people need to understand that. And we have, by the way, a very good population breakdown in the United States. We have a lot of families still. We have a lot of people having babies, uh, though uh, we might start to see that change. Uh, it seems like it's more and more with especially the youngest of the generations uh, that they're kind of thinking, you know, I don't know if I want to have kids. I don't know if I want to do that. But that's extremely important. And you got to figure that out some way. Uh, and so if you look at the different bands of generations within your population, you can pretty much predict, are we going to have a downturn in the economy or are we going to have an expansion? Yeah, no, that's that's a fascinating point. And, you know, coming originally from Ireland myself, I mean, we've seen that across Europe where where, um, you know, birth rates have, have plummeted, you know, even gone into the negative territories and stuff and what impact that's had on, on their economies. Yeah. And I think, too, by the way, that's just a, a little bit of an education there, too. If we don't have birth rate, good birth rate, you want immigration. You want people coming into the country so that you have uh, economic growth. And sometimes people look at the fact of people coming over into another country as a negative. And if you don't have a good birth rate, then it's a positive. And uh, that's not it's not a negative. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, they let me in here. What can I say? You yeah. Know, still, <clears throat> 20, nearly 25 years later, they still haven't kicked me out. So you know. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, one of the other parts, you know, you you mentioned here, I mean, I think this under underpins everything is is really understanding what your goals are, your tolerance for risk and all of that. But what your what your ultimate goals are. And I think and you probably come across this a lot. Uh, you probably ask people like, what, so what exactly are your retirement goals? Whatever, and they probably can't really tell you because they only have thought about it in the abstract. I think so. And I think the other thing is, is that the retirement goals are not always just financial. Mm -hmm. The retirement goal could be, what am I going to do with my life now that I'm not, I don't have this career. And so we talk a lot about, you know, what are your goals from the, what do you want to accomplish? What is it you, do you want to be a volunteer? Do you want to, um, have a consulting business? Do you want to travel? Like, you know, those are goals that may or may not cost money. In fact, some of them might make you money. Uh, when it comes to goals, though, when it comes to, you know, my economic goals or my, you know, how much my finances are going to do, that really comes down to a very personal preference. It's not about your age. I've got clients that are in their 80s and they have no problem with having full on risk. And I've got clients in my 50s, in their 50s, and they want extremely low risk, if no risk. And so it really comes down to an individual's thought process as to how much risk they take. Yeah, no, that that's interesting. Well, I'm I'm thinking if I if I reach those like 80 or whatever, those years and whatever, I think I'll just be completely reckless at that stage, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so how would you, how would you advise people to go about reviewing their situation? You know, like right now, like taking a deep breath, maybe, um, obviously talking to a professional like yourself, but what are some of the things that people can just do themselves to maybe educate themselves a little bit better and maybe, you know, allow it to take the, take the pressure down a little bit. I mean, I think, you know, obviously reading, uh, is going to help you, uh, try to stay away from the alarming headlines though. You know, the headlines that says everything is fantastic today and you think everything's great. You wake up in the morning and everything is horrible. We try our, to, our best to tell people stay away from the, to, from the, the headings that are just trying to get you to, to actually, you know, click on their article and go with stuff that just says, okay, let's just take the basics. 
And I think the basics are listing out what you actually have. A lot of times we get people in and they're talking to us and, and they, they really had not listed out what they had. They didn't know their balances. They hadn't looked at it in a while. They were kind of scared to look at it. Well, embrace that. Write down all of your balances. See where you are. Look at how much you're saving. And then come up with what you actually are spending. Sometimes people are scared to look at that, but if you list that out, that, that basically is kind of like your, you know, we do that with a business plan. Why not do that with your personal plan? How much do you have that you've saved so far? How much are you saving and what are you spending? Don't worry about trying to make a budget yet. Let's just know what the numbers are. And then that's going to really help you to start down the path of going, okay, what do I need to do? You may be way worse than what you thought or way better, but if you don't know, that's the worst. Yeah, and I know I, I totally agree. And I think I think part of the problem is that if you think if you think I hate to say this, but we're old enough to remember pre-internet days and all of that, and you know days when you had to balance your checkbook and you, it was it was you had to do a little bit of work, but it, in some ways it was easier to track because I mean you knew when you wrote a check, whatever. Now you have everything online. You have all these outgoings going out. You you know purchase things at the point of a click. So to your point. Um, I think a lot of people are, would probably be surprised by their outgoings. Uh, I think, well, everybody, yes, I, 100%. I mean, including myself. <laughs> yeah. And I think sometimes, you know, we, you know, people come in and they think they're spending more money than what they're spending. So I don't think it's always <laughs> a negative. Sometimes they go, you say, how much are you spending? And people usually equate what they're spending to what they are bringing home. And that's not always the case because I go, oh, I forgot. I'm actually giving away so much per month. And I'm also... Um, uh, uh, saving so much per month. And so I really am not spending it all. And, and I think that that's one of the biggest surprises is that when people realize they're not spending as much as they thought. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would love to have that surprise. I must check <laughs> one day. <laughs> well, listen, listen, Ray, this has been fantastic. And the book is called Secure Your Retirement, Achieving Peace of Mind for Your Financial Future. It's literally just been released. Um, and there's some other books as well that are worth checking out. All of all of the information will be below this video and links to that. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about your company and yourself and how you help people. Uh, well, the name of our company is Peace of Mind Wealth Management. And I mean, we say it within the name of the company. Our objective is to help people have peace of mind as they prepare for and live throughout retirement. Um, we uh, primarily work with individuals that are in that last leg. So about 10 years out of retirement or already in retirement, we have a main objective, and that is to help people uh, build a retirement financial plan that's super simple, that they can read and understand, not 50 pages, usually around five pages, and then to be able to have an investment plan that gives them a, a way of being able to protect from significant losses. Uh, we also, I think the best way to learn about what we do and how we do it is in our own podcast. We have a podcast called Secure Your Retirement, and uh, we answer a lot of questions around financial legacy and lifestyle. And I think that's probably the easiest way to get more information about what we do and how we help people. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And I would I would encourage people to check out the books, check out the podcast. I think obviously, as we know, the better informed you are, the better decisions that you make. And and I like the piece of advice you offered earlier is is avoid the sky is falling uh, headlines, everything is going to happen. And just like you should avoid the, hey, get rich quick ones. And uh, you, know, just, you just need to do this and you're gonna make a ton of money or passive income by you know, this multi, you know, marketing, affiliate marketing or whatever it is that are. So stay away from both extremes. That's probably a good <laughs> message. <laughs> Probably, yes. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much for today. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.